say I've been getting tatted They say they like my thing, yeah I say that I'm flattered They ask me where I've been I say I've been getting tatted Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the M52 Vanos faults and errors that I know a lot of you guys end up getting and you can't diagnose either what it is. Now, a lot of people, even myself, end up jumping straight to the solenoids, but there's a lot you've got to check before replacing your solenoids or even trying to take them out to check them or thinking it could be your solenoids. So I'm going to show you on the M52 engine what you've got to go over to check to find out if your Vanasoin is actually at fault or if it's something else because there's a lot of stuff on there that shuts off the engine and the Vanos will not respond properly if that part fails. Okay, so as you guys are aware, this is the M52 engine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the problems that will stop your Vanos advancing and also retarding the timing. So the first one down there, as you'll see right there with my torch, is the Vanos solenoids. Now, they're responsible for advancing and the retarding of the timing and also to keep oil pumped up to the Vanos adjusters in, to actually make the timing advance in the first place. Now, that's the first thing a lot of people jump to when they think they've got Vanos codes and instantly think that that's the reason why their Vanos is going bad. As you'll see down there, which is right here, which is the camshaft sensors, they can also cause Vanos codes if they go bad. So that's something a lot of people ain't aware of, but if you actually check them, they can easily be the culprit for your timing not advancing either because the DME, they send a signal to the DME when to actually advance the timing. So if they're bad, they won't be sending a signal, which then means your timing won't be advancing, neither retarding. The next one is the ignition coils. Now, the reason I speak about the ignition coils, as you guys know, they're under the engine cover, is because if an ignition coil goes bad or it ends up misfiring, what ends up happening is you get a low down power. Now, not all the time it calls a check engine light, it depends on how severe the misfire is. Now, if it starts misfiring bad enough, what ends up happening, it shuts down that cylinder, the DME will do that to stop the you damaging the cylinder. What will end up happening, it will go throw on a reduced power light as well. A lot of people then jump and think they're solenoids, but they're not actually responsible for that. The ignition coils are responsible for that a lot of the time and if you get a bad misfire and you're getting you've got a bad ignition coil this is the first thing a lot of people do you go and place their solenoids and then they still have the problem and that's because they haven't replaced their ignition coils if you've got a bad ignition coil the dme will shut down that cylinder so therefore you won't be advancing or retarding your timing the next one on these guys is the math sensor which you'll see right there now they're not actually known to go bad and i haven't had any go bad in my experience on this car but if they do go bad i can assure you right now that will cause your vanos error codes as well because obviously it uses air and fuel to obviously create the power now if that goes bad it's sending the dme the wrong uh air results what will happen is it went up front and check engine light and going to limp mode as well so be aware of that one the next one on these is the manifold absolute pressure sensor which is on the back of the manifold down here which sits on top of the manifold now that measures the absolute pressure inside the manifold now if that don't work correctly your fuel will not be burning properly because it will not cap, uh, be able to read the amount of air going into the manifold as well so it won't be able to advance the timing because the manifold absolute pressure reads the full pressure inside the manifold and obviously it's all responsible for advancing the timing on the engine now I ain't known them to go bad, but I know a lot of people end up breaking them when removing the manifold on these. They end up snapping the connector on them. So be aware of that, that if you break it, it don't work. That will cause a reason why your timing won't advance either. The next one on this, guys, is the lambda sensors. Now, if one goes bad, you end up with high CO2 levels. Secondly, these are known to cause misfires. They all sit down there, as you'll see, where the leads are running on the exhaust, as you can see right down there and they do go bad and they're known to go bad. Like I say, I haven't had them go bad on this, but you'll end up getting converter codes as well if they're gunked up in oil. That can also make your car run extremely, extremely rough and also not advance the timing because where they're covered in oil from if you've had a crankcase failure and it's gone all into the cylinders and it's been burnt off by the plugs, they can also fail and then just cause absolute nightmare of codes, check engine lights, and they'll throw the engine into reduced power mode as well. And also if they do throw the engine into reduced power mode, obviously as you guys know, the O2 sensors measure the fuel and air mixture. They need to be on this engine and they mix work very well with the Valvetronic system itself. So be aware that if they do fail, um, that can end up stopping your time in advance and or retarding as well. It is known to do that. Um, it's everywhere, everywhere, a lot of people are already aware of that as well. The next one on these guys is the Valvetronic motor. Now, as you guys know, it sits under here, underneath the case. You guys know exactly what I'm on about the Valvetronic motor. Now, a lot of people when removing their valve cover end up 
taking that off and not relearning the steps. Now, if you don't do that, your car will not start on some years, but if your car does start and you haven't relearned the steps, your Vanos will not retire properly because it wasn't. It won't know where to sit on the eccentric shaft. It won't know when to advance time and when to retard it. That Valvetronic motor is crucial for the advancement of your engine. So if you have done a valve cover gasket job and you haven't done that, I advise you to go and do that because the valve cover gasket, I know it leaks on a lot of cars, but you always have to remember to relearn the Valvetronic motor, the Valvetronic limits procedure on here because it's crucial. Now, if they fail, what ends up happening is the eccentric shaft wind, it winds forward and back on the eccentric shaft. Now, if it fails, what will happen is your timer will not advance because the eccentric shaft is used for the Vanos, the whole Valvetronic system. So what will happen if it stops working, your Valvetronic motor, which you'll probably see a full code for binding or sticking, which is not a good thing. If it's binding, you want to get it removed and replace it straight away will cause a lot of check engine lights as well and that will also throw your whole Valvetronic system into limp mode. It will run fine, but what will happen is you'll lose the whole Valvetronic system so your car will feel very down on power if your Valvetronic motor goes bad as well. That is responsible for advancing the timing as well in terms of the solenoids with the eccentric shaft under there as well as the cams. The eccentric shaft is used mainly for emissions but it's used, it runs in turn with the Valvetronic system. So if the Valvetronic motor fails, the whole Valvetronic system goes down together. So be aware of that and if you haven't relearned the adaptions and you've just recently Recently done your valve cover I'd advise you to go and relearn the settings of the Valvetronic motor because it's crucial for the Valvetronic system and you know what do all this before replacing the solenoids because I know the solenoids ain't cheap and it could be many many other things responsible for it like I'm showing you instead of just being your valve uh, the van or solenoids okay guys so another one I'm gonna speak to you about is the disavow now if they fail Oh my good God, <laughs> you guys wouldn't, wouldn't believe it, but these things can cause you to lose power and throw Vanos codes galore. Now, when these were failed on this car when I bought it, it was throwing Valvetronic codes, Vanos codes for the motor and everything, and it ended up being the, dis the disa flaps. Now, as you guys know, the disa flaps are used for the power. Now, if the DM is reading the wrong actual power from the car and you're trying to push down harder on the accelerator, but the disa flaps ain't working to give you the power that's meant to come in from the beginning, these will throw Vanos codes like hell. These have to be working. Now, if yours are not working, and what's happening is the flaps are not closing properly, the DME is then send, you're sending the signal to the throttle body to open wider, the DME is asking for more fuel, and then what's happening is asking for more air, but the flaps are not closing properly to give that required amount of air to the engine. So then what ends up happening, the timing ends up over the advancing because it's then sending too much fuel into the engine. So then it ends up throwing it into limp mode and then find, frying the Vanos code, thinking it's the Vanos when it's actually these. They're disa flaps. So make sure you go and check them because they're responsible for a lot of the time of the Vanos codes as well because they're intake runners. And as same as M54 guys, they're used to control the amount of air going through the manifold. The air's got to mix with the fuel for the Vanos to be able to advance properly. Otherwise it will retard and just cause loads of check engine lights and you'll be running around like a headless chicken looking for your fault code. So these are all the things to check that run in turn with the whole Vanos system on the M52 engine itself. So just be aware of that. Now the next one guys, as a lot of you already know, I've done this in my previous um, oil videos, the oil filter. This is crucial. As you guys know, it's got an oil separator inside it. Now a lot of garages, when they change the oil, end up throwing it away and not even realize it's there because it ends up coming off with the oil filter and they just dash it away. Which they end up doing is putting the oil filter back what they end up doing is putting new filter back in without that filter element. Now that filter element is crucial to control the oil flow to the Vanos itself and to the Vanos adjusters. Now if you're missing that, what's gonna happen is gonna send too much oil to the Vanos adjusters, which in turn, what would happen, it will end up sending too much oil to the Vanos adjusters, which is not a good thing because it will end up flooding. That filter is responsible for a lot of things. If you're getting any kind of whining coming from your engine as well, your oil filter may be crushed because I've seen a lot of people using cheap oil filters in here and they'll get up getting a whining sound make sure that filter's here because if it's not that'll be the reason as well that your vanos could be acting up so that's what i'm saying guys don't just go and change your solenoids thinking it's them it could also be this because this is a common problem if the car was ever looked after by a garage previous to you they might have dashed away that filter that actually separates the oil for the vanos adjusters to let it send the correct amount of oil to the whole vanos system it's crucial that you check this this is an important part that will stop the vanos completely and can end up killing off your engine so the next one guys I'm gonna to speak to you about is the fuse box underneath the pollen filter housing. Now in that main fuse box, which is the engine management fuse box, there is fuses there for the Valvetronic motor. Now 
So a lot of the time, what happens is when people take the valve tronic motor off, when changing the valve cover here, they end up touching the ground to the positive, on the wires to the coil packs, and they end up blowing this fuse right in here. And now I've had many, many cars come to me with this happening. And this is something you have to be aware of as well, that if even if you jump your car as well, you can easily pop them fuses there for the Valvetronic system. So be aware of that as well. They sit underneath this pollen filter housing, as many of you are probably aware already, because if you've had water damage DCUs, you'll know exactly where the fuse box is. And then fuses there control your Valvetronic motor as well. And also, all the other electrics go into the Vanos system but the most important one is the Valtronic motor because that's the only one that's electric so be aware of that the, the Vanos Solnos run off the DME fuse all together so they're not a problem they run off the same wiring harness but the Valtronic motor does not so make sure you check that fuse if it, you're not getting any kind of van if you're getting any kind of Vanos codes now another one I'm going to speak to you guys about is the battery cable as you guys know runs underneath the floor here I've spoke to you previously about that now if that cable gets fluctuations between the power cable as you guys know it bolts to the ground of the chassis of the car, of the car here now if that comes loose or ends up getting any kind of vibrations and comes loose that will knock out the electrics as well for all the Valvetronic system now, as you guys know the Valvetronic motor and the Vanos solenoids all run off the electrics from the DME that battery cable is crucial for your Valvetronic to actually be working properly as well um, I've told many many people about it and they've got it sorted and sorted their Valvetronic issues so if you are having any kind of problems with your Vanos as well I, I think you should go and check the battery cable underneath your boot area along with the battery underneath here make sure your battery is fully charged I, I'd advise getting it out and getting a new one because that battery is probably dead as well and the battery will send fluctuations to the Vanos system as well along with the IBS because you've got to remember the IBS is the intelligent battery sensor that sends all the power signals to the alternator when to charge it if the battery is flat it's having to use more power to charge the battery which then in turn loses power from all your Valvetronic system at the front of the engine which also lose power to all the interior lights and everything like that so make sure you check your battery as well okay guys said so you would have just seen now I've just gone through with you all the M52 Vanos faults and codes on what can actually trigger your Vanos light and what to check before actually replacing your Vanos solenoids. Now I know a lot of you, the moment they go, you will start trying to rip them out and clean them and all this kind of stuff, which you don't actually have to do. You can actually check the more simpler stuff beforehand to actually make sure it's not that stuff instead of spending loads of money on these other parts for something that might not even rectify the issue. Now these faults are the common faults for the Valvetronic system which will stop the Valvetronic system working at its full maximum efficiency if these parts were to fail. So just make sure you go and check all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. Please like this video because as you guys know, liking it helps get it out a lot more. This is BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.